What's growing on? So got another exciting stop for you here today and I'm actually not even supposed to be in here today. It's a having a private event. The place is shut down. They're gonna kind of let me sneak in and meander around. And we are at Coldwater Gardens in Milton. So they supposedly have a beautiful clear water creek running through this place. All types of cabins, event center, um, glamping tents, beautiful gardens, flowers. Hold tight, this place is supposed to be pretty legit. I'm excited. What's growing on? So I've got to keep my voice down out here. You all know how loud and intense I can get at times, but they have a wedding party about a 150 yards up the hill and they're kind of looking to get their privacy today. They've rented out this entire site. So just behind me in this greenhouse, there's a Curtis Stone style market gardener. So half of this is permanent raised beds. The other half is just 30 inch beds. I think they have like five greenhouses like this. They have aquaponics, they have hydroponics. Um, you know, they've got permanent beds, they've got ponds, they've got bananas, they've got sugarcane, they've got loquats, they've got figs, persimmons, jelly palms, hops, grapes, turmeric, um, all kinds of cool stuff. So I think they're kind of short staffed today. I'm going to try my best to get you all a little tour through this place. I think this is a peach here behind me. Um, there's butterfly gingers, hydiciums over here. Um, blueberries just over here on the other side of the hill and you can see there's a there's a real slope here I don't know if you can see but there's a, a lot of topography here You know heading up to this main office and a lot of these beds I've noticed are on contour You know so they're planting those beds on that natural level line of the land Planting into it this way it's slowing and catching that water as it comes down the hill. I see a lot of uh, Smart and interesting design going on here to say the least um, a lot of natives a lot of stuff to bring in beneficial insects it's definitely uh, heavily planted out. I didn't see a rack of bananas, unfortunately. Lots of beautiful flowers, though. I saw them at the market this morning. Um, that was probably, you know, 50% of what they were selling. And unfortunately, I didn't bring the camera in. I should have showed you all what they had set up at the market this morning. I actually called them and didn't get an answer. I didn't think this was going to happen today. And talking to the guys at the market, they're like, just drive out. So we're here now. This is about an hour from where I'm actually doing work. So it was a little bit of a haul. But I'm going to take you all in that aquaponics greenhouse, show you around. So let me know what you think. So what do you guys got growing on here? You're trying all kinds of different stuff, right? We are. The garden was set up um, almost as a showpiece and educational center. And uh, through the WOOF uh, volunteer program, we got a lot of help. So we have developed a whole lot of very small areas with uh, different projects going on within them so it's not set up as production style at all we have a lot of different demonstration type stuff cool yeah what's this here behind us so um in this greenhouse is our aquaponics and it's been running for about five years we have koi in the fish tanks we feed the koi uh the koi the the water from the koi tanks feeds the plants and flows back into the tanks again so all of these beds on both sides are growing plants using the koi cool do you all have to heat that water in the winter time or anything we used to try heating the water, but uh, because we don't have a lot of temperature control in here, we actually just grow different plants based on the temperature and feed the fish different amounts based on the temperature. Sweet, so they make it through the winter without heat. That's awesome. They do. So did you go to school for horticulture or anything? Um, I'm actually a senior at University of Florida. And senior at UF? Whoa. Program. Yeah. Um, this is called Komatsuna, and this is a type of pak choy. We grow a lot of these uh, Asian, tender greens. Asian greens in uh, this aquaponics system. They work really well that way. Cool. And uh, what happens is in each bed, you can see the water flowing in from the fish tank. So the water pumps in, it fills the bed, and then it drains from the center. You can hear it draining right now. When it drains, it returns right back into the tank, and the water's cleaned and ready to be pumped through again. What's your lows up here? What's it, do you know what zone we're in? Uh, we're in zone, well, we were 8A, but I believe we're zone 8B now. 8B? Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. And uh, it, it's, it's been 13 degrees out here before. 13? Yeah. You guys have seen some snow here and there, flurries? A little bit, yeah. Okay. So out here is our main garden, and we've got chickens. 
the chickens have to stay in their pen because they get in trouble in the garden and they wander off in the woods. But we feed them a whole lot of leafy greens from the garden and we feed them like a really expensive organic lamb feed also. And they do have a lot of organic. Are you guys expecting some frost? Uh, we will be expecting frost probably in about two weeks. But so you're... These covers are actually, this is insect netting, so it's, called, it's also known as a floating row cover. Uh, these are not frost protection at all. They're more protection from grasshoppers, uh, flying aphids that might be coming in, or um, any of the moths that would be laying eggs. Wow, the some more or less insect protection. Yeah. Interesting. Cool, what's in this greenhouse over here behind us? Um, so these greenhouses are actually, some... these are known as high tunnels. And high tunnels aren't greenhouses because you don't have really any temperature control, but you have uh, like mild frost control. Just stopping and, the frost from setting here. Yeah, and also with these, we can screen them off. The other one is screened off, and that really helps with pest control, so we don't have to spray in here. So you got some permanent beds in this one, huh? Yeah, we can control um, the amount of water because we have covers, and we control the amount of sunlight. So in the summertime, we can reduce the sunlight with shade cloth, and we grow a whole lot of leafy baby greens in here. This is our salad mix and arugula that we sell at the market and we sell to restaurants in Pensacola. I was say I had a restaurant in downtown last night that said they get their greens here. Was so. it Global or Carmen's? Carmen's, yeah. yeah. It was delicious. Cool. So these, I mean, I see you got permanent fixed beds, but this looks like this is like milled wood off of the property or something, huh? Oh, the wood borders. These are cypress slabs from Wilson Lumber and okay. they're the leftovers when they mill the wood. The rough cut. I got yeah. you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the parts they wouldn't use for the house. Yeah. Cool. What's growing on in here? So um, this is our hydroponic system. On one side we're growing broccoli and on the other side we are growing cherry tomatoes. Um, the broccoli is doing really well in here. This is a re-sprouting broccoli so once you cut the top all the side shoots sprout and you can continually harvest it. So we should have this crop in here for another couple of months. Wow. It's very cold hardy. We don't have heating but we do have some plastic sidewalls we can roll down for a little bit of frost protection so we're hoping this crop will go through the winter for us. So you guys have already had your first main broccoli cut? We have. Oh, yeah, you're way so, ahead of um, us. I saw there was one down here that had a big head on yeah, it. Yeah, you can see the tops. I actually just was harvesting them. So you can see how the first top has been harvested. Yep. And now the side shoots are beginning to mature. And they will grow up. And I don't have a good example. We just, oh, here. So here's a side shoot as it's maturing. Oh, so nice. then we'll get these as well. Um, most of this went to market yesterday. So we did harvest it pretty heavily. Um, but here's a good broccoli head right here. Oh, you guys did a market yesterday too? Uh, well, we harvest yesterday. Oh, for market yeah. for today. Okay. There's a broccoli yeah, nice. head that's a few days away from maturing. And that hasn't been cut yet? It has not. Okay. The other nice thing about in here is um, with a crop like this, it's small enough that I can manage the pests just visually and by hand. We actually remove the caterpillars so I do not have to spray anything at all in here. When we do spray anything, it's certified organic and we don't spray it on any of the food that we take to the market but sometimes when we have an outbreak, we do have to spray. So I'm really proud of not having to have to use any nice. chemicals in here. Are you all yet. certified or you just follow organic practices? We are not certified. Just following practices yeah. then, yeah. We just follow the practices and we're open to the public. So we really like to educate people and invite them to come out and see. We don't say no spray because I don't believe that that's possible around here without complete screening on all of your buildings. But um, everything we use, we share that information and um, take all that data down. So, so you're doing good with some small tomatoes in here, huh? Yeah, so this is our chocolate cherry tomato. And um, we've been growing the chocolate cherries for six years out here. Uh, they are an heirloom, and I save the seeds every year from the healthiest plants. Really? They're a pretty little reddish purple tomato. That's the standard size. They're very, very sweet and uh, they've been doing quite well in the system as well. How far into the winter can you all grow these? It'll just depend on the temperature. We don't have heat again, okay. so um, I'm not expecting this crop to go a whole lot longer, although health-wise it really could. It looks good, yeah. Yeah, and uh, the nasturtiums as well we um, oh, are working on in here. These are really delicious edible flowers. We sell these spice to, to them, yeah. Yeah, we put them in our salad mix and it really brightens it up. It's that uh, taster for the top, huh? Yeah. Oh, you got a little, what is this, like a... And this is some like succulents and some native plants. So, I see that, the pinto palm. Yeah, yeah. Jelly we're, palm. <laughs> we're experimenting with uh, different native plants that can really handle... Bread. So I did see bananas up there and sugar cane. Have you all ever harvested bananas here? 
We have never harvested bananas. Never harvested, okay. It would be a rare thing. Now that doesn't mean that I would say it's not possible. Okay. But I would say that it's probably You're not, not protecting a crop. them or anything like yeah, that. They're it's just coming not back. Crop that you would probably have any financial success with around here. I got you. More for fun, and it gives it a nice tropical feel. This is our other high tunnel that is um, a little more developed. So you can see we've got covers and we've got screens. Um, the, the screening helps us with the pests so that we don't have to spray the crops in here. And the other wonderful thing about the screens is when we do have situations like, late, like aphid infestations, which will come in through the screen, we can release ladybugs in here and they won't escape. So we actually actively have ladybugs. You're keeping them in here. That's in awesome. Here. Yeah, this is Mizuna. This is a very spicy Mizuna. And um, this one, this one's called Golden Frills, and this one's called Ruby Streaks. Nice. We sell a lot of that to Global. And we've got Rainbow Chard over here. What's the irrigation coming off of? Just a well? Yeah. Nice. So is this where you guys put the uh, the bad tenants here, or what? <laughs> what is these this? Are, these are our uh, vermicompost bins. That's uh, We're growing red worms in here. We have four bins. Uh, they're concrete block built down a little bit into the ground to help with temperature control and moisture control. Nice. And um, then we have a barrier at the bottom, like a ground cloth that's water permeable, which keeps the worms from escaping. On this side is a finished worm casting, also known as vermicompost. And uh, that's uh, what it looks like when it's finished. Wow, so is this garden scraps, we, kitchen scraps, everything it is, scraps? It's garden scraps, but really we are very careful what we put in here because we use this as the sole organic component in our potting mix. And so we don't want any contamination or bacteria or weeds or anything Coming like that. Coming back in, yeah. Maybe, mainly our baby greens from our high tunnels when we pull them to put a new crop in, we feed them to the worms. So we feed them on one side. Mix that with strip newspaper and cover it with cardboard to keep oh, it there they are. And here are the worms. They are hungry. They finished eating. They're up there looking for food, and huh? They are looking for food. The nice thing is they'll eat that cardboard when they're hungry. Um, these are also springtails in here, which are very important uh, fungi decomposers. And yeah, so you can see that they're layered up and uh, the top layer is real chunky and then if you dig down you start getting into that really nice vermicompost down there at the bottom. Wow. So when this side fills up we just empty that side and transfer them back over. So this is your potting mix for starting veggies and stuff? It is, yeah. Whoa, this is where the nutrient dense good stuff comes <laughs> from, huh? Yes. New Country Organics, is that the uh, chicken feed bags? Yes. New cool. Country Compost this bag. Nice. Here we see the thorns. <laughs> Stacking functions. So what is this, all turmeric? Yes, this is all turmeric. Oh, so you guys are going to be bringing some turmeric to the market, huh? We've, yeah, we've actually been growing out here since the beginning. And um, What's the big difference in the really brown stuff and the green stuff on the edge? So we've got a sunlight difference here. Just literally in that couple feet? Just literally in that couple feet. The sun is moving right now, so it's a little brighter over here. It's getting protected. Also, these are more open, and we might have gotten a little nipped by that cold spell that we had. Wow. That's good, though. They're dying, and they're pulling the carbohydrate down into that rhizome, which will make the rhizome fill out, and then we'll harvest it and sell the root at the market. Corruption here. So this is our furnace that we use to heat the greenhouses and um, it's actually so the furnace is at the front and uh, it has a there's a big water bladder inside here and okay. the pump is on the side and the pump pumps hot water through um, some big channels like they're insulated in the ground and those go into the greenhouses and then the hot water pumps through a radiator and the fan comes on it and blows hot air into the greenhouses so we would start Whoa. fire in there. Then you get all that free ash out of there and everything <laughs> else, huh? Which we, which we apply to the garden. Some charcoal maybe too, huh? Yeah, yeah, we do. We get some yeah. good charcoal. So now, um, I'm guess you said not all your greenhouses are heated. No, this is for our upper greenhouse and our aquaponics greenhouse. Now the um, high tunnels are not heated, the two covered areas where we both grow the baby. So in the aquaponics greenhouse, it just does the ambient air, not the fish? Um, yeah, and we only use this on a really cold night. Okay. So, because it's obviously a whole lot of work. This is our pollinator garden up here. And we've got a little natural pond right here with a lot of native plants in it. And um, this is all just uh, the pollinator garden we wanted to have out here to attract our beneficial insects. And because we've got a lot of uh, native butterflies, we want to raise awareness about um, planting plants that are a good food source for butterflies. Uh, we keep it on this side of the garden, of course, because those butterflies do lay eggs that turn into caterpillars. Yeah. Caterpillars do eat plants. 
I think I see the uh, Passiflora incarnata up there, right? Yes. And the uh, Mapop. Wow. Yes. And this is very important for the Gulf Fritillaria. Yeah, it's the host. Small orange butterfly. Have you eaten the fruits off of this? This is actually the dark purple variety that doesn't make an edible fruit. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then I have the native one, which the fritillary prefers, but it's almost better to have this kind. They'll still feed on it and um, pupate and become adults. They'll complete their life cycle, but they won't completely decimate the plant. Okay. The native one they decimate. So those little fruits I see aren't edible on there then? Um, I haven't found one to actually ripen and become edible yet. Okay. This is the fruit. Yeah, I saw a lot on there. I was like, whoa. Yeah. They stay hard, hmm. and uh, we do have a, a lot of milkweed here. We um, are just growing the tropical milkweed because it does so well, but the monarch butterflies, of course, are doing well on it, and here is a, here's a monarch larva right there, and those aphids are just the native milkweed aphids, so they're always going to be on your plants. Nice. And, uh, Feeding those guys so they don't eat your garden, huh? <laughs> feed them on this side. What is this big tall tree? Is that some type of apple? The to the left of the mulberry? Pear? Oh, is that a pear? That's okay. A pear. Persimmon to the left of that? Yes, persimmon. Oh, I need to go harvest that. Oh, is there fruit on them? Yeah. Is that the fuyu? Yes. Yes. I'm nice. Oh, so you got all the beds numbered out here, I see. So there's something growing in these. They're just insect protection on here then. Yeah, the shade cloth is when we seed out of bed because that helps the... Um, that helps uh, maintain the moisture level while the seeds are germinating. So these buds are seeded out, and you can see they're nice and wet. It is nice and wet. Because of the shade cloth over them. So the shade is different than the insect netting. What's the silver for? The silver is our aluminum shade netting, and this is wonderful. It's, um, Heats it, it up. It reflects the sun, so it actually cools the bed down. And um, once again, you know, we're just experimenting with that. It's a little more expensive, but it's really helpful to plants here in Florida where the sunlight is very intense and the temperatures are very high. Sarah, I think you've given us a pretty awesome little tour here. We haven't missed too much. So you've got chickens. Any other animals I need to know about? Um, just our chickens and fish. That's about all we have. Chickens and fish and right now? Worms, okay. Technically animals. So if people want to find you guys, the farmer's market, what's the website here? Uh, we are www.coldwatergardens.com, so it's cool. easy to find. And if you didn't have an event this weekend, somebody could just come and like spend the night here, right? Absolutely. It's very easy to book online. Okay. And of course, you can always call us. Our number is right there on our website. Check out the website, check them out at the local market. Thank her for the tour. And like always, like, subscribe, share, and don't forget, pound it.